Mickey Bizzik Architect. Yeah, out on one of the current projects here. Um, today, I'm gonna put on my plumbing hat. It's not a very big hat. I don't, I don't claim to rival the great plumbers out there, but I do have a little bit of information that makes me very, very dangerous in the plumbing world. So today's topic of discussion, you're gonna love it, water heaters. Not only water heaters, heat pump, hybrid water heaters, right? So you can see here, I have the Rheem Proterra Prestige Series. Now, one of the beauties of Rheem is, you know, this is a company, you know, 100 years and going, but this particular water heater here, this has been in development for say, let's say maybe a little over a decade, right? So this is actually the fifth generation of their um, hybrid heat pump water heaters. This one here took, I think it was something like a little over four years of development to come up with uh, the technology for this one. And, you know, Reams claim is that they've had, you know, somewhere around 30 plus individual experts that all had input to the success of this piece of machinery here. Now, one of the things that stands out is, you know, this hybrid electric water heater, it's environmentally friendly or environmentally conscious, but it doesn't stop there. This actually has the highest uniform efficiency factor, UEF, of 4.07. Now that's the highest of any water heaters out there. What does that kind of translate to in dollars? It's nearly a $500 savings above a standard electric water heater. So if you look at their tag here that they make the claim, they're saying that the operation of this water heater is about $149 annually, or in your case, about $12 and I don't know, 47 cents, 48 cents, if I did my math correctly, but a little over $12 to operate this water heater. Now, this isn't the largest one they have. Go on their website and check them all out because I don't wanna make a claim that I don't know, but I know they have different sizes. We actually downsized it. I believe this one is their 50 gallon. We have another one on, on the other side of the house. The house here is such that it's L-shaped, about 3,300 square feet, 3,400 square feet of floor space. And the distance between, say, this water heater and the other water heater is probably somewhere around 140 linear feet. So rather than put one water heater here and have to run all that piping over there from a large water heater, we put two water heaters in strategic locations. The other one's over there to service the powder room, the kitchen, the laundry room. This one is over here to service the owner's bath, right? When you think about placement of these devices, you think about, again, how are they gonna get used, right? There's a performance side of this, but there's a functional side of this, right? Where is the most water gonna be used? Where is the most hot water gonna be used? In this case, the answer is right there, right? And right there is the owner's bath is directly above me. So when you go in and you turn on that shower valve, then you're not draining 100 feet of plumbing pipe. You're draining about six feet, seven feet of plumbing pipe to get water from the water heater there. So, you know, you have to be somewhat conscious of where do I put these things? So 4.07, that makes this the most efficient water heater currently on the market here. Like I said, it's about four times efficient as the standard electric water heater. Um, and, you know, when you put these in, I know we got some rebates, um, each water heater. I wanna say, Massachusetts, we're, we're really good in um, promoting these kinds of devices as opposed to other states. I think, you know, typically you can get upwards of about 2,000. I think we got about $2,500 in rebates in using um, each of these water heaters in the house so make sure you check into that um, when you're purchasing these and putting it in you know one of the things that uh, 
I like about this at first glance, notice that, you know, we have our plumbing running up, up on the outside, but notice that everything that happens on the water heater is pretty much right here on this face. Why is that important? Well, in this basement, it might not be as important because we just put it up against the wall underneath the owner's bath. But if we were trying to tuck this into a corner or if we didn't have the luxury of a 200 square foot mechanical room like we do here, then we would have to be plugging this in. And the last thing you want is a pipe coming out here, a pipe coming out the bottom here, an access panel over here where I can't necessarily tuck it into a corner anymore. It has to be out in the open. So, you know, Ream did a really good job of consolidating all of the external events of the water heater and putting them in that one plane there. Now, one of the other beauties of this in their development is this water heater actually has an internal leak detection device. And what that means is if this thing recognizes that we're using a lot or losing a lot more water than we should be losing at a rate because it's from the leak, it immediately shuts itself off and tries to not fill that water heater so that that leak would continue. So you might still get some water there, but that leak detection has an immediate shutoff um, so that you don't have this huge problem. We, I did have a project years ago. Homeowner went away to Colorado from Rhode Island, came back, and he had six inches of standing water in his basement because his water heater failed, it didn't have the shutoff. And basically the, it was the, the water pipe or the water heater thought it needed water, so it just kept filling. Well, it had a leak. So the filling drained into the basement, but because it didn't have that leak detection, it just kept filling the basement and treating the basement basically as the water heater. So um, anyways, good for that. Lastly, beyond the efficiency, there's actually an app to this water heater. So as the homeowner, and you know, this is a topic that I'm kind of on the fence. Um, I would love to hear, you know, in the comments from you, what you guys and gals think about this, because, you know, I always think more information, it isn't necessarily a good thing, but having an app here, understanding what's the water temperature. I can, if I go away on vacation and say, oh, I forgot I could turn that down. I could go on my app at the airport and I can say, hey, reduce the water temperature in the water heater from this to this based on me being gone for a week or two. Or, hey, I'm heading home. Let me boost that water temperature in the water heater because I'm going to be home later today and I want to have all my, my both my water heaters set up and in tune for me to take a shower tomorrow morning. So we have that app available there but uh yeah i mean other than that you know the water heaters it certainly it, it takes its uh the heat pump it takes its heat from the room here so one of the interesting things when my first experience with heat pumps were it was june it was hot it was um pretty humid outside and i remember going down in the basement and i felt like i just walked into a cooler like there was no humidity or that because the water heater is taking that heat out of the air. When it drops that temperature, the air has less ability to hold moisture. So it's not only cooler, but it's a drier air down there. But anyways, if you're looking for water heaters, you know, out here on the project, we use Ream a lot. This is a great water heater. Again, it is the most efficient on the market right now. So go give them a look. Um, we use them, like I said, we use them a lot. So. Anyways, I'm Steve Basic Architect. That's my little spiel on water heaters. Certainly enough to get me into trouble. If you have something to add, please add it in the comments. If you're following along, a huge thank you to you. If this is your first video with me, go check out some of my other videos, but smash that subscribe button. Tell all your friends. And until next time, long live our buildings.